I'm Larry Anglisano reporting for Ab Brief. Since you really can't fully appreciate all the exhibits at the New England Air Museum in Connecticut in one visit, we thought it'd be a good idea to break our exclusive museum tour coverage into multiple videos. Here's part two of our behind the scenes walk around with museum's Bob Vizzola. This is a one of a kind aircraft behind me. The K-16B is a demonstrator that was flown by or that was prepared by command for the Navy in the late 1950s and early 60s. The K-16B is the predecessor to what we know as the VS-22 Osprey. It was a demonstration of a tilt wing aircraft that could do short takeoff and landing, two if it worked to the concept vertical takeoff and landing. Uh, this program was under a Navy contract. When the contract ended, uh, the aircraft was at command and then it was donated to the museum. This has been outside for us for years and we're bringing it in here now to do what we call a preservation. The preservation basically uh, takes the aircraft and puts it in a state where it won't degrade anymore. It doesn't go to a full restoration start to finish. So our volunteers here are taking this aircraft right now we're closing up the holes that come in the cockpit. We're getting it ready for paint. We are getting all things in the rotor systems and the rest ready to show to go back on display. The K-16B, as I said, is one of several one-of-a-kind aircraft that we have here at the museum. We're blessed uh, with that type. You see people right now, they're working on sheet metal repair on the bottom. We're We've taken off the rotors and blades uh, to get them preserved and restored for show again. But the aircraft here aren't always in brand new factory condition. They come in various stages. So we're patching up the holes, we're taking off the old paint, we're getting ready for the new. If you look at the wing, that is a concept uh, that needs to be studied and we have a team from Worcester Polytechnic Institute that they're doing their major qualification project on the performance characteristics of what this aircraft was due. It was flown full size in a wind tunnel in California. The next step of going to flight did not happen but due to the analysis that the team is doing we'll find out the characteristics whether it could fly for real and if it did what its performance would be. So this, as well as being something for show, is something that is going into helping the engineers uh, find out performance and working in the education, which is a big part of our mission here at the museum. As we walk along, we don't just do the aircraft as a whole. We take off components so we can do work individually. It's kind of a mix between a helicopter in a straight airplane. So they use what they call prop rotors. Uh, the rotor blades would be coming off of this. There are three on each rotor system. You see all the actuation in uh, um, the pieces that would work uh, as you would expect to allow the maneuvering and orientation of the prop rotor blades to work it like you would a helicopter for the listing system. So our crew chief for this aircraft, Rick Centauri, uh, was an aviation maintenance guy in the Marines. Uh, he's an electrician now. He has worked in the past at command itself. His dad worked in the, uh, actually the flight support, test flight support. So our guys have a real background and affinity to some of these aircraft. What you're looking at now is an aileron from the Albatross, which is a Coast Guard aircraft that's outside of the hangar right now. And these aircraft, due to damage from the tornado, from winds and the weather, uh, need some repair. What they're doing now is sheet metal repair to repair the structure using Clecos and rivets to prepare it. The interior structure is metal. The exterior is a fabric. The fabric itself, once the structural repair is done, will have to be reapplied. So not everything you see is as today, where it was sheet metal, aluminum, titanium, exotic materials. This will be a fabric and dope system. And as you look at this, this is in pretty bad shape, which is why rather than just patching, 
we're probably going to have to refabric this whole wing. And people like Tom, who's had experience in that, act as the mentors that'll teach uh, a lot of our volunteers that don't have the full skill on fabric and dope repair what needs to be done. He'll guide them through the process. So mentorship is important. Uh, we work on a crew chief system where one person is responsible for the major project and he takes the other volunteers and assigns them according to the need and according to their skills. So nowadays the tech schools give you a video on fabric repair. Our guys have to actually get their hands dirty, go in and do actual fabric repair. So there's some skills here that are passed down through the generations that uh, some of the guys here that are volunteers have none of, done it before now become the experts that can be passed on to the uh, uh, the tech schools. The Bernelli was built as a ended its life as a prototype. It came here to the museum uh, after a hard landing in a field in Maryland, stayed there for years, and it was donated. Actually, it was sold for the price of one dollar to the museum in a state uh, from being outside for years of abuse. This is a seven and a half year restoration project done by the volunteers here at the museum to put it back together as it was in the glory days when it was flying around the country. Uh, this is comparable to the end of the time of the DC-3 across, but uh, there's great differences between the two. This is a lifting body as opposed to a, a normal airliner in which 30 to 40 percent of the lift of this aircraft came from the fuselage, the body you see, which is wing-shaped. Uh, it was very degraded. Uh, this took a lot of sheet metal and structural repair to the body because it had a hard landing uh, from where it is. Trucked in place from Maryland to us here uh, at the New England Air Museum. And from start to finish, the crew chief on this, uh, Harry, had a great team of people that have finished it inside and out. What we're looking at now behind me is a TV-2. This is a 1950s vintage trainer. If you're an Air Force guy, it's a T-33. The Navy designation was a TV-2. It's a two-seat trainer uh, that was based on the F-80 Shooting Star. This was also an outside aircraft, and after decades outside, it had degradation on the wing, and in fact, unfortunately, it had everything from a bush growing out of parts of the wing. It was in pretty bad shape. Although we clean them every couple of years, it still takes a toll on the outside. This was preserved, closed up, repainted, and this was rolled out into our outside display yard just this January. So this is one of our newest preservation efforts. Again, the volunteers put this all together. This doesn't come from the factory. This comes from the hard work of dedicated volunteers doing everything from sand down what's on the surface to patching sheet metal repair to putting uh, intake covers in. Right in front of us, nose on, is the F-89 Scorpion that we got from the Maine National Guard. So as many of the aircraft here in the museum, this was flown right here in New England. The F-89 was acquired prior to the days where everything was owned by the military. It was passed on to us, but the more modern aircraft will still be owned by the military services, and we asked permission to get them on loan. Once we get them, we ask permission for anything that is done to this. This Scorpion set out for decades. It was almost uh, ready in its restoration process when the B-29 came to the museum. The B-29 is an iconic aircraft that you will see on display. Magnificent aircraft, but it took a lot of work to get in place. To get that work done, the F-89 was put to the side and I'm afraid it was relegated outside for decades, half done, and it saw a lot of problems. This is another 1950s vintage aircraft. It was in an interceptor. It was built to intercept the Soviet bombers uh, coming across the Arctic Circle, which is why you see the big wing tanks on it, the engines, are set up. This has engines still installed in it, 
But for our aircraft, the acquisitions come from many areas. For the military aircraft now, as I said, each military service has a museum organization that owns the aircraft and they will work between the different museums to see who gets what and they will keep tabs on it to make sure they are being uh, preserved and taken care for. 